Okay, it's uh, 2.45 and all my coworkers are here to heckle me, so I guess it's time to get started. Uh, hi, I'm Ben Jackson. I've been working with the Commonwealth for about 10 years. I started off as a person that was supposed to work one summer to install, seven or install 27 computers, and here I am 10 years later. Uh, I'm a Senior Information Security Advisor for the Information Technology Division. Uh, we'll talk more about them later. Uh, first off, I'm going to make two apologies. Uh, First off, if my phone rings and it's my wife, we're expecting our first child in about a couple of weeks, so if the only reason she'll call me is if something big happens, like he's arriving. So if that happens, bye. <laughs> That's my recurring nightmare, which is why my phone is actually on and I didn't mute it. Um, second off, if you notice on my outline, 201 CMR 17.00, which I'm sure you're all itching to hear about, I had a nice, you know, 20 slide, you know, chapter on. Uh, 201 CMR, and I ran it by legal, and the powers by B said, yeah, you're not, we really wouldn't want you to talk about that because everything should be going through the Office of Consumer Affairs. So, unfortunately, this is going to be a bit of an abbreviated presentation. We are going to cover everything else, though. Uh, data breach laws, Chapter 93H, Executive Order 504. And thank God nobody's leaving. Uh, we're going to start off with a brief history of data breach laws. Uh, I think we all know the granddaddy of them all was California's uh, Senate Bill 1386. It was passed in 2002 and went into effect uh, July 1, 2003. Uh, the text from basically the bill and now the law says, this bill would require a state agency or a person or a business that conducts business within California that owns or licenses computerized data that includes personal information as defined to disclose specified ways any breach of security of the data as defined to any resident of California whose unencrypted personal information was or is reasonably to believe to have been acquired by an authorized person. I love lawyers. Uh, this, after it went to effect, was a proverbial light in the dark corner. We really didn't know how often Laptops were stolen, backup tapes were lost, servers were compromised, Ethelin Accounting posted 500,000 social security numbers to her AOL homepage so she could work from home. Uh, this was basically, like I said, the light in the dark corner. Everyone suddenly started reporting to people in California, oh, hey, we lost your data, sorry. And which was interesting because all of a sudden we'd find out that, you know, somebody lost a tape in middle of New York City that contained, you know, social security numbers. California got notified, however, no one else did. And we're all kind of scratching our heads, saying, I'm sure my data was on there, I have an account with your guys, what's going to happen? Uh, following this, Massachusetts, along with, I think, currently uh, 43 other states between now and 2007, passed an act relative to security freezes and notification data breaches. It went into effect October 31st, 2007, and that's called Chapter 93H. It's uh, available on the mass.gov website if you're really interested into it, but we'll cover it briefly. Uh, chapter 93H requires any group, public or private, suffering a data breach containing personal information of a Massachusetts resident to, to notify the Office of Consumer Affairs and said resident. Uh, Office of Consumer Affairs is a state agency. I'm sure if you do business, you do know about it. They handle uh, all kinds of interacting with consumers, you know, complaints about your business or other businesses and uh, working and does business regulations. Uh, the other two parts are uh, it allows customers to free their credit reports if they're a victim of such a breach and make information safeguarding uh, the personal information, which is 201 CMR 17.00. Uh, we are always talking about personal information. What is personal information uh, as defined by Mass General Law 93H? It's so a resident of Massachusetts, first name, first initial, or their last and their last name, and either their social security number, their driver's license, or Mass ID card. Which is, if we, does anyone not know what a Mass ID card is? Okay, a Mass ID card essentially it's a license that allow you to say it's a personal form of identification. It looks a lot like a license, but doesn't allow you to drive a car. Uh, also, their financial account number, credit card, or debit number with, uh, with or without any security code, access code, personal identification number, or password that would permit uh, access to that resident's financial account. Uh, this doesn't apply to publicly available information from federal to state. Uh, there's a, Massachusetts has a lot of uh, records that are publicly available. Uh, these records would not apply under this case. We're actually allowing them and other state laws to be public information. Uh, when does 93H come into play? 
When a person information maintains, stores, or owns licenses data that includes information about the resident of the uh, Commonwealth, knows or has reason to know about a breach of security, or knows or has reason to know that the personal information of such a resident is used by an unauthorized person or used by or not for an unauthorized purpose. These are all texts from the law. I'm not, this is why they all sound like legalese, because they are. Uh, I always love any presentation that works, lets me work in Carl Sagan. Uh, has reason to know. Basically what that is, is it's covering their tracks of, do you under regular circumstances kind of know that something happened and data would likely be, has been authorized by access. And the quote that I worked in is, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. As in, we've been breached, we kind of suspect the data's out there, but we have no proof that someone accessed our database. We just know that, okay, our database server got hacked. We don't know if they accessed our information. That's basically what that has reason no uh, is covering. It basically means, you know, do you, ha do you suspect, do you, can you, are you willing to, you know, testify in the court of law or whatever that your information hasn't been breached? And chances are if they've gotten to your database server or if somehow have accessed your information, you have to basically assume the worst case scenario that your data is out somewhere in the middle of the Eastern Europe. Uh, like I said, if you even think your know data isn't open, 93H is now in effect and you need to start notifying people. And I'm sure some intrepid person pretty soon is going to come up with the MGH 93H emergency button. Uh, hasn't been released yet, but I'm sure that, you know, Ron Popeil or somebody is going to come out with this. So you've had a breach. And this is how it always happens. You've done all your firewall defenses, you've got your IDS, your network's all secure, and all of a sudden someone accidentally uploads all of the data they want to have access from home and leave it their laptop in the front seat of their car, which is then stolen. Whoops. So there's two basic classifications within 93H. It's someone that maintains stores or but does not or own licensed, or licensed data that includes PII. Um, say you're owning an ISP and you know one of your customers' servers have, you know, gotten hacked. You need to contact the owner of licensor of that data. Uh, another case in this case would be um, if you, I know a lot, I came from a public health background, one of my, one of my previous jobs in the state. Uh, we, own, we don't own or li we license data from somebody person, but um, we don't actually, aren't controlling of it, someone else's data set. We have to then notify them that, hey, you know, Oops. Uh, someone that owns or license data that includes PII needs to notify the Mass Attorney General, the Mass Office of Consumer Affairs. Uh, they must provide notice to the agency of the relevant uh, consumer reporting agency or state agency. Uh, that's basically a bit of legalese. Uh, a resident, a relevant consumer reporting agency. Uh, I think the best example of this would be, uh, you know, the credit credit uh, reporting firms. Uh, if a Massachusetts government agency that is part of the executive branch, uh, say, you know, ITD, like my group, uh, we also need to count, uh, contact the supervisor of public record and we need to start at something called a cybercrime incident, uh, which is a process at the Information Technology Division. Uh, what do you need to tell the Office of Consumer Affairs and the Attorney General's Office? Basically, a detailed description of what happened and how it was unauthorized, how the access was unauthorized, and you know, how did that actually go down? Uh, the number of the residents that were actually affected by it, steps taken to remediate the incident, uh, any steps taken uh, before we actually notified, before the notification goes out, and, or sorry, after the notification goes out, and information whether in law enforcement is engaged or investigating the incident. And this is basically to allow, you know, if the FBI is doing a, inc or use Secret Service or Mass State Police is doing an investigation into the incident, this will allow them to, you know, we can actually work with them and hopefully delay any notification so if it doesn't blow any type of uh, investigation that's currently going on. Um, how do you notify residents? Question in the back. Oh. Mm hmm If the laptop is, I believe 93H says, if the laptop is stolen and it's encrypted with a uh, suitable form of encryption and the key or the uh, password isn't, say, written on the laptop or included with the laptop in some way, 93H does not come into effect. Um, if you want, I can go make sure that that's the correct answer for you. Yeah. Well, him first.
Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't. If, if you have data for, for customers from other states, mm -hmm. is, are they are all state laws consistent with that? Would it be an exception, or are you possibly still kind of? That I don't know. Um, that's, I'm sure that there's a hodgepodge of laws from other states. Uh, what the question was, uh, this is how the encryption, uh, I guess, you know, whole kind of or get out of jail free card works with 93H. Does that happen in other uh, state laws? Uh, that I don't know. Um, that's basically, uh, it's going to be an interesting research project because I believe there's 44 states uh, that have such of these laws, and I'm sure that some of them do not have the, such uh, ways out. Do you have a question over here? Sounds right. Uh, the the key, according to this, the ninety-three H doesn't actually specify the algorithm, but it specifies that the key needs to be one hundred twenty-eight bits uh, long. Uh, how do I notify residents? Uh, there's a written notification, uh, an electronic notification, if provided consistent with eSign, which is a federal law passed in two thousand. Uh, it's in section fifteen of the United States Code, two thousand one C. I don't know anyone who actually has this type of pre-existing relationship with their customer base, so chances are it's probably not going to happen. Of course, you may have this already. Um, there's also a third option called substitute notice. Uh, substitute notice, allow, uh, Chapter 93H allows you to do a substitute notice if all of these are demonstrated, or if any of these are demonstrated. Uh, the cost of providing a written notice exceeds 250K. Uh, the cl expected class of Massachusetts residents need to be no notified exceeds over 500,000 residents or you do not have sufficient contact information to provide the notice. Uh, substitute notice consists of electronic mail notice, if you have the electronic mails of the affected uh, customers, uh, clear and conspicuous posting of the notice on your home page. You know, can't just tuck it into the back there and hopefully, you know, hopefully it'll blow over. Uh, publication in or broadcast through the media or medium that provides notice throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, chances are if you've reached this level, uh, I'm assuming that you probably will get this broadcast through all the news agencies because you'll be on the 6 o'clock news. Uh, who has this happened to? Uh, the Office of Consumer Affairs actually releases aggregate data. Uh, I believe it's every uh, six months on notifications. It's available on the uh, OCA webpage at mass.gov. I have a link for that later in the slides. Uh, 201 CMR 17.0 and I, I enjoyed this because it's our disaster recovery plan goes something like this, help, and I think that's unfortunately a lot of small businesses and other businesses have the same for an incident response plan. Um, 201 CMR 17, uh, see standards for protection the personal information of the residents of the Commonwealth. It was created as a result of 93H. There's a little section in there that says the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation shall adopt regulations relative to any person who owns or licenses personal information about a resident of the Commonwealth. This doesn't just apply to people doing business in the Commonwealth, well, people who are based in the Commonwealth. It applies to anyone doing business in the Commonwealth if you have information about Massachusetts residents. Um, as for the specifics, like I said, I really can't go over that, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, OA, OCABR has been very helpful in answering questions. Uh, through mass.gov, there is uh, information regarding that. I have a link for that later on the slide. They do have been participating in public outreach sections, uh, sessions. Uh, with various industry groups. Uh, OCABR has been working with certain industry groups regarding uh, questions regarding compliance, and they actually wrote a very nice small business guide for formulating a comprehensive written information security plan for uh, people who need to have something start. It's not a comprehensive guide. It's uh, just something to start people out, and it's not, it's, I believe the line that they use is that it's not going to mean, if you do this, it's not going to mean you're compliant, but it'll show you where to go. Uh, the link to that is actually some hidden on their website, so I made a quick link. It's called uh, is is.gd jjj capital G. Uh, Executive Order 504. Executive Order 504 is basically the um, government's answer to 201 CMR 17.00. Uh, it's basically showing that the Commonwealth is eating its own dog food. Uh, we are making sure that we're holding up to the same standards as the business Commonwealth as we are. Um, before Executive Order 504, there was Executive Order 412, 
uh, to protect the privacy of personal information that was written in, it was put into effect uh, June 23, 1999 by Governor Swift, remember her? Uh, agencies for the executive, executive branch of the government can only collect the minimum amount of personal information needed to perform their functions, uh, and agencies need to review their policies and practices regarding related to information about individuals. Uh, this was actually big news at the time. I believe I was working for the Department of Public Health and we actually did have to go over and find out because we dealt with a lot of statistics regarding um, citizens of the Commonwealth and we had to figure out, you know, are we collecting too much information? Of course, you know, everyone says, no, 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 we need all of this. And when you actually start going through it, you find out, well, no, we don't really actually need this. We don't need the other thing. So um, it was a pretty big deal at the time. Uh, before Executive Order 504 also, there was uh, two main security groups within the Commonwealth. There was Commonwealth Information Technology Division, uh, where essentially, this is my, my division that I work for, it's where the Commonwealth Internet Service Provider and Managed Service Provider. We essentially provide internet connection uh, to any state agency. Uh, and we also, if you want to have your, you know, host an application, have a web application, have a, C, you know, have a, you know, massive SQL Server farm that you don't want to manage, we'll do that for you. We'll provide managed service for you. Um, the other uh, part of this was the Commonwealth's Enterprise Security Board. Uh, essentially, it was set up in 2001. It was created by ITD, but kind of lacked official standing. Uh, it's a cross-section of Commonwealth agencies and authorities, local governments. Uh, basically, they advise to security practices, and basically, it's a giant powwow. Every, I believe it meets every month to just discuss where we are, policies, and uh, make recommendations on how we can all, how the Commonwealth can become more secure. Uh, we work, the ITD and the ESP work to rather create policy on cybercrime security incidents, electronic messaging, data classification, remote access, and wireless policies, among many other things. Unfortunately, before Executive Order 504, even with all these agencies and policies, it was a bit like herding cats, and I'm not sure if everyone can read that, but it's, I think I'd rather manage a large software product. It's the dreams of, daydreams of cat herders. Uh, unfortunately, you can also easily say that I'd rather be managing, you know, the Commonwealth security because we did have policies. We had a lot of people who worked together, but unfortunately, we kind of lacked official standings trying to try to tell people, you need to do this. We had policies that basically suggested, suggested ways of uh, people should be more secure, but some more, sometimes these are very rare exceptions that people would say, oh, hey, forget this, I'm not going to follow these policies. And it was more of a uh, working together, uh, sometimes with good results, uh, trying to make sure that they were secure and everything was, everything was okay. We always won. It was just more of how much hair do we lose in the meantime. Uh, Executive Order 504 is the order regarding security and confidentiality of personal information. All executive agencies must implement the maximum feasible measures reasonably needed to ensure the security, confidentiality, and integrity of the personal information of the citizens of the Commonwealth. Uh, this is basically the key phrase for ITD is we can now say, you know, I, we love your application, we'd love to host it for you, but you're not currently meeting Executive Order 504. It was a nice little catch-all phrase. Uh, it also formally establishes the Enterprise Security Board, which is something we were really looking for, we're really happy about and it also revokes and supersedes Executive Order 412. Uh, all the information, most of the information in EO 412 was restated by Executive Order 504. So we are, you know, we can't suddenly go back and say, oh, we're collecting all this new information about you. Uh, what does Executive Order 502, 504 do? Well, it doesn't change any pre-existing contractual obligations with the state. So if you somehow do information or business with the Commonwealth, um, you're currently not, until your contract comes up for renewal, you okay, you're, don't have to make any changes. Uh, any pre-existing security or privacy laws, I think uh, it actually supersedes most of them. Uh, and it doesn't apply to uh, non-executive agencies. The, uh, if you all remember back to civics class and know how everything is uh, constitutionally separated within the federal government, it's also the same way in the state government. Uh, legislature, trial courts, authorities uh, are not under this jurisdiction. However, the e, both Chinese 3 h and EO 504 say you guys need to do this or do something similar that matches ex, matches the rules set forth. With Executive Order 504, uh, all executive agencies must appoint information security officer. 
uh, develop a written information security plan, uh, otherwise known as an ISP, and also must produce a personal data security uh, and electronic security plan, an ESP. Uh, must self-audit ESPs and ISPs at least every year and have security, tr all employees attend mandatory information security training. This includes staff, supervisors, managers, and contractors. Uh, they also must verify all vendors and contractors have acceptable security controls to prevent data breaches. So any um, contractors that we do business to, we need to make sure that they're up to snuff. Uh, they also must fully cooperate with ITD to fulfill ITD responsibilities. Uh, ITD actually has some um, additional responsibilities underneath the EO 504. It must implement its own ISP and ESP. Uh, we're going to have it verified by an independent party, so we can't just say, oh yeah, we did our ISP and ESP, we're going to check it ourselves, we did great. Um, issue guidelines on developing, implementing, e developing and implementing ISPs and ESPs, because basically we're currently developing our ISP and ESP. We're going to make guidelines, because we're going through all the pain of it, uh, we're going to make guidelines for all the other executive agencies to follow and say, okay, well, here's how we did it, you know, you guys want to model after that. Um, what we are going to review all ESPs and all ESP audits, and it also has to review all other agencies' compliance with Executive Order 504. Well, this is great because it says, you know, you need to do all this stuff, but how is it enforced? Well, we did have a, uh, this is basically the teeth of the order. Uh, ITD, with the approval of our secretary at the Executive Office of Administration and Finance, uh, will determine remedial action if your ISP, ESP, or something doesn't up to snuff. Um, and puts you in violation of EO 504. Uh, we can then impose terms upon your IT agency's funding. So basically, we control the purse strings. So in summary, I'm sorry, this was very, very quick. Uh, if you have data on Massachusetts residents, you're sure to make sure, you're already on the hook to making sure that it is secure, because if you get breached, you're going to have to deal with 93H. Um, 201 CMR 17 is coming, and you need to learn about it. Don't ignore it or hope it's going away. Um, it's probably going to cost you. And Executive Order 504, the government is eating its own dog food. So here's some links. Uh, the state homepage is mass.gov. Unfortunately, the links within mass.gov are a bit unwieldy sometimes, so I made tiny URLs for anything. I promise, I, you know, nothing nasty behind this, but if you really want to go, make sure you insert preview.tinyurl.com. Uh, 93H is uh, tinyurl.com slash chapter 93H. Um, the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulations homepage and ID theft page is tinyurl.com slash M-A-O-C-A-B-R and M-A-O-C-A-B-R ID theft. And Executive Order 504 is available at uh, tinyurl.com M-A-E-O 504. Questions? Yes? Uh, with regards to uh, 93 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that they, each individually, are legally responsible for reporting a data breach. It's not us in IT, it's the person who discovers the breach. Yes. I've been telling people that like, they, are, they, will, they could suffer legal consequences if they know something and they don't report it. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair thing to say? Um, definitely something that they should need to report it. It's basically, you know, if someone sees something bad happening, they need to report it. Uh, I think it's, uh, as for personal liability, uh, I'm not sure. If you can give me your email address, I can make sure that I can find out for you. Um, the, but yes, it's, someone will be liable if someone notices something and doesn't tell anybody. I'm not sure who that will be, but if something, you know, if, say for example, you know, so, somebody loses their laptop, somehow manages to sweep it under the rug and no one tells, no one notices any about it, if that um, thing gets posted on eBay, so all of a sudden, you know, company X is going to say, Company X is going to find out, A, they have a laptop that has personal information that was discovered by someone who bought it on eBay, and that's going to all come back, and it's going to get back to them. At least that's how I look at it. Um, do we have someone back there? Sure. My question kind of builds on that. What are, are there specific penalties in place for you know, businesses that are found not to be compliant with this? Because it's, obviously, it's not like something you can audit for. It's, there's civil penalties. Um, as for how it will be enforced, that's, it's a question currently being addressed by the Massachusetts Attorney General's office. Uh, I don't know the specifics on that. That's basically another division that's, uh, I just make sure that everything's going to happen on my, I, keep my, I make sure my shop's in order. I don't know how exactly that's going to affect um, the laws wise. I know there's, uh, I believe it makes, Downey 3H makes reference to civil penalties. 
Yep. Is there anything in those first two laws, the 9382 on CMR, that regulates how long a company can hang on to data? Uh, just reported notifications. I don't believe that's addressed in 93H. Uh, I believe that might be addressed in another state law, but I don't know. I, I, I believe there's some type of guidelines for state agencies. I don't know about private businesses. If you do want to talk about 201 CMR 17 from a completely non-Commonwealth endorsed perspective, talk to the guy in the back with the big beard. He has uh, done some very nice work on. Yes? Detecting what? I believe that's I believe that's covered in 201 CMR 17.00. Uh, the actual business regulations are all covered there. Yes. 93H went into effect October 31st, 2007. I believe they all go into effect. I believe they go into effect on 1 1 2010. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. As for the specifics, talk to OCA. Any other questions? Oh, yep. That's above my pay grade. I can't comment on that. <laughs> I can get. I can. T I can tell you people who can't comment on that, and I can give you their contact information. But <laughs> any other questions? Yes. Ben, do you mind just putting back inside your office? Oh, sure, not a problem. I think this will be up on my homepage, which I have a link to either, and I also think that'll be up on the source homepage. If uh, you might want to talk to someone and staff on that, but I believe they told me that all the presentations are going up. Any other questions? Yes. Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulations. They've been very helpful. Uh, I believe they're, I believe they've, you know, just basically you can email them and they can probably start working with you and answering your questions that you may have. They've been very helpful for uh, I, know, I know a couple of people that knew me and they knew I was in IT security and they asked me certain asked questions and I basically introduced them over there and I think that I, that's the last I've heard about it so I assume it was pretty successful. Well, successful. Uh, I, there's links on their homepage regarding, like I said, this, there's a small business guide which will show you basic, basics on the information security plan. Um, as for specifics, um, they can probably they might ha they can probably tell you what they have uh, for you know basically if you ask them with a general question I'm sure they can start pointing out because I'm sure that you're not the first one that has asked it. Uh oh, yes. Oh yes. No comment. <laughs> yes. That's an AGO question. <laughs> that's a that's an attorney general's office question, and I think that kind of goes back to what uh, Jack was saying. Yes. Do people ever see some kind of a superseding federal law, especially when that goes into uh, some of the proactive things like the 
speaking as a security professional and not an employee of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I would love to see a federal law. Um, I not, that's completely different. I mean, state government, I think we're all seeing it on, we, I mean, we've passed, I think 44 states have information data breach laws. I think I would not be surprised seeing something possibly within this Congress, at least attempting to get it done. Whether it passed, that's a different question, but that's, I mean, that's, I don't have a crystal ball. If I had that, I'd be very rich by now. <laughs> All right, anything else? Um, officially, if you want to contact me and if you have further questions that I wasn't able to answer, my email address is ben.jackson at state.ma.us. Or if you want, if you have business cards, I'll take them and I will make sure that I contact you somehow. Uh, or I can put you in contact with people. Or if you want to give me a telephone call, you can call me at 617-626-4575. Um, unofficially, and this has nothing to do with the Commonwealth, uh, my website is inismir.net and my Twitter name is inismir. Thank you very much. Look at that. You get the cap to have the second half of all the presentations.